The latest report from Nebraska's National Agricultural Statistics Service listed 86% of the state's cattle and calves in good to excellent condition as of the end of February, with calving progress nearly a fifth complete. To look ahead to the spring grazing season, this week we talked with Nebraska Extension Range and Forage Specialist Jerry Valeski about fertilizing pastures and hayland, as well as grazing annual forages. We started, though, by asking for an update of moisture conditions in his area of North Platte, Nebraska. Well, in uh, central and western Nebraska, I think we've, we've come through the winter pretty well. Had some occasional uh, snowstorms, as you would expect. And I think on average, we'd probably be looking at near, near average precipitation or normal precipitation. The southwestern part of the state may be a little, little below average. What does the outlook for grazing season look like? Well, I think, uh, of course, we're getting very close to spring and some of the cool season grasses uh, starting to green up here fairly shortly. I think we've got some soil moisture in place to get them started, so I think people are pretty optimistic. We are, of course, once we get into that April and May time frame, uh, is, that I think is really when the, the precipitation is going to be very important. You, wrote, uh, you recently wrote on uh, Beef Watch with Bruce Anderson about fertilizing pasture and hay. Tell me about the possible benefits you can get from fertilizing. Sure. Well, of course, with uh, fertilization of, and it's mostly in the case of our tame or introduced pastures or uh, in the sand hills, sub-irrigated meadow, we see some producers do fertilize those. Objective there, of course, is to increase the production. Uh, sometimes there might be some side benefits in terms of just trying to improve the stand of the grass, get it to be thick enough, and that of course in turn would be uh, make it a little bit more competitive against weeds and ultimately result in some greater production. Can you give me an idea of what kind of return you might see from this? Well, we've done uh, um, research for a number of years in the sand hill sub-irrigated meadow situations or that environment, and on average we see about three quarters of a ton increase in hay production given a, a standard fertilizer application that consists of about 70 pounds of nitrogen, uh, 20 or so phosphorus, and 20 or so sulfur. Now there are associated risks with fertilizer or some possible risks? Well, in terms of um, not so much on uh, the sub-irrigated meadow, but on other dry land or like smooth brown grass pastures, you've got to have the rainfall to go along with it to, to make that fertilizer pay. Why is it so hit or miss in those situations? Well, um, it's just, again, the nitrogen is the primary nutrient that's going to be getting the, giving us the, that response in grass. And if we do go ahead and, and apply fertilizer, for example, uh, say sometime in April, and uh, we do go into an extended dry period, uh, we, we may lose a lot of the potential benefit of that fertilizer. You said if you're really looking out for costs, you might be even better uh, off to do dividing of pastures rather than to do irrigation or rather than do, to do fertilization. Right. And so, you know, if we do fertilize some pasture or hay ground, and of course uh, we do see kind of an expected response in the grass and we do hay it, well obviously there we're haying is a bit more efficient in capturing that increased yield that we've produced. Now if we're grazing this fertilized pasture, we want to make sure that our grazing management is uh, up to par are, mm -hmm. are very good in order to capture that. And part of that would be dividing uh, this pasture that we are grazing. And with the dividing, say, into four paddocks or subdivisions, uh, graze in one at the start, wait uh, uh, or allow the cattle to graze it about half down, move on to the next paddock, and then keep that rotation going. That really improves the efficiency, the grazing efficiency, we call it, which really just means more of that extra forage we're growing is going into the stomachs of the animals. You also recently wrote on Beef Watch about growing and grazing annual forages. Explain that option for producers. Well, uh, the last several years we've seen a, a, a fair increase in the number of acres uh, where producers have planted annual forages specifically for grazing. So this would include things in the spring, uh, say late March to early April, planting oats, field peas, spring triticale, some barley and then grazing those uh, once you get to about the uh, mid to latter part of May. And then on those same acres uh, coming back after that, say it's oats is grazed out, planting a warm season annual forage um, in early July and have that for later summer or even fall grazing. <music> 